All right, in this video, I want to talk about charts. I was getting back into the book Dispensational Truth by Clarence Larkin. And in the book, like all his books, he has charts to help illustrate what he is saying and break down the Bible so that you can see things out and how they, they all line up. And while checking these charts out, I was remembering a video from Donnie B, the Stand for Truth guy, talking about how his beliefs and explanation of Revelation chart out very well, even though he hasn't shown a chart about his beliefs and how they all line up. And he was saying how the opposing view does not chart well. And I was like, you know what, I guess I'll make this video to disprove that. I know, I think it's on the 28th, this Thursday, he's having an open mic discussion about end times theology with Kent Hovind, I believe. I'm going to try to check that out and actually be there so I can ask a couple of questions. But I wanted to just make this video to show uh, that to say the other side doesn't chart well is either a lie or ignorance. I'm assuming he's ignorant because Clarence Larkin has tons of charts. I got a book that's just charts of his. It's a whole book, no writing about it any or anything like that. It's just his charts. And you can go through here and you can see some that are very complicated, like right here. You see some that are a little more simple, like right here. But... Uh, yeah, there's tons of charts of him explaining all kinds of different things. And I'm just going to skim through so you can see different stuff to do with the whole timeline of 7,000 years, stuff to do with the tabernacle, stuff to do with Daniel's vision, Revelation's vision, Daniel and Revelation combined, um, what's going on with the heavens. As you can see, talk about like the third heaven the, and then what was going on under the earth. He gets all kinds of charts to help visualize and explain what the Bible is saying. A lot of good charts. But for the sake of this video and the point that I wanted to make is that Donnie B was saying that people's view of, let's say, a pre-tribulation rapture don't chart well. And it was just uh, very condescending and cocky when obviously he's speaking from ignorance. Uh, and again, he hasn't presented a chart to show his view. But here's a quick one of from Clarence Larkin here, charting out uh, the tribulation here. Uh, not the tribulation only, but from the time here, looks like uh, I can't really read the words too well here, but it looks like one... Israel went into Egypt and all the way to the cross and we have the church age and at the church age we have the scattering of the Jews and then as the church is raptured Israel is gathered back and we have the tribulation and then we have the second coming Jesus coming back with his saints coming down on the Mount of Olives and taking out the Gentile nations and protecting Israel. And this one I was showing first because it's a little more clear. This one is a little better where it's talking about the book of Revelation, but as you can see, it's not so clear. Even when I shrink it down a little bit, it doesn't help. Uh, but uh, good thing I have this chart in a book here. So I'm just going to briefly go over what I can make out from memory because I obviously cannot read uh, the detail of what's being said here. But here we have uh, the churches being mentioned in the book of Revelation, and we can see the candlesticks here, and a rapture. And we're brought before what people call the Bema Seat Judgment, where we are not judged uh, whether or not we are saved or not, but judged 
on our works as being saved Christians, and we get rewarded or not based on what we've done for Jesus. And that's when the seals are opened, things that are returning back to Israel, and he's showing the horsemen, uh, the seven-headed beast, the image of the beast, uh, the false prophet who's coming up like a lamb, the woman riding the beast, and the angel giving out the, or three angels' messages as being given out. Actually, that one's like three other three angels. Uh, the trumpet's being blasted, and here it looks like the angel's pouring the stuff out. And then we got the church coming back down with Jesus, and we have the millennial reign. And then we have the destruction by fire after the thousand years and the new heavens and the new earth. This actually is a really good chart if it wasn't so blurry. I could get into more detail, but this is all shown out. He gets into each little plague and everything. Very detailed. I'm not saying it's 100% correct, but it charts very well. And this Donnie B was making it seem as though charting out is evidence of being right or wrong. And uh, if that's the case, I would like to see his chart, not just claiming that he has one and it charts well. And uh, yeah, the other side charts very well. Matter of fact, I'll try to look for one that is a little clearer so that you don't just take my word for it. I know you can look for these things yourself, but. I'll help you a little bit. Let's just go with, uh, I spelled his name wrong. My bad. Let's go Revelation Charts. See if we can find a clear one. This one looks nice. even got some color to it. Let's try it out. Nah, it's still blurry. Let me try shrinking it. Not, not too much better. Can't shrink it too much because then you can't really tell what's going on. So let's uh, look at a couple others, see if I can find a good one here. That is, works well on the camera. This one, a little clearer. But I can't zoom in too much without making it worse. This one looks pretty nice. Maybe if you go to it yourself, just search Clance Lock and Revelation Charts. You'll be able to get a good one that works well on your your laptop, tablet, or phone, or whatever. But uh, as of the moment, I am not having good luck getting into one that has uh, decent detail. Maybe this one. Again, no. I'm just going to try a couple more, so if you want to sit through the video and wait, or if you want to cut it off now, uh, do what you're going to do. But uh, I'll try to find one that looks a little more simple so that it's not so detailed and might be able to show up clearly. This one looks good. Looks like it's in Spanish, though, and very detailed. This one looks blurry already. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll be the opposite when I click it. Nope. <laughs> All right. I don't think I'm actually going to be able to do it. You know what? What I might end up doing, I don't think I'm going to get a response to this because I asked him these questions on his videos. I've, I've made a video asking the questions and... I haven't got a response to them. I've gotten a response. I haven't got an answer to the questions. And the question I want to ask Thursday is how he actually reconciles being saved by grace and the mark of the beast. Because during the tribulation, the mark of the beast is going to be given out. And you're going to be saved by whether or not you take that mark or not. So that's no more grace. Right? Because if you're saved by grace, you can take the mark of the beast. So I don't see how their belief 
actually fits together. But maybe they see something I don't see and they can explain it. Uh, hopefully I get to ask that question on Thursday. Hopefully I'll be able to get on there. And if not, hopefully somebody else is there and they ask that kind of question. This looks like a nice one, but I don't think I'll be able to see. I'm going to look for one more. I want to focus on revelation. Less information if we don't include Daniel in there. Might be able to get a little bit more detail to show up on the... How about we use this one? This one looks like it's not so bad. All right, it's not detailed, but you get the idea of the cross. Uh, we get the church age, rapture, and the resurrection of the dead. They go up before we do. And then the great tribulation. And then we are coming back down. And he reigns for a thousand years. And then we have the great white throne judgment where those who are raised to damnation are coming up and thrown into hell, the lake of fire. So here we even get a little chart of when Jesus comes back, the raising of the tribulation saints. And I think it's weird that I see this happen all the time. I'm going to end the video with this. Is Donnie B was saying, that, oh, the tribulation saints is not something that's in the Bible. There's no mention of, like, tribulation saints. And it's like, yeah, but that's just call, what we call the saints that are saved through the tribulation. And I think it's weird because I see this, like I said, all the time, where people will say, well, yeah, the word trinity isn't in the Bible, but, you know, God's a trinity. Or the word rapture is not in the Bible, but it's the being caught up, being taken being caught up into the air with, uh, into the heavens, into the clouds with Jesus, right? It, you know, that exact word isn't there, but it's a word we use to describe it, such as the word Bible is not in the Bible, but that's what we call the scriptures, the Bible, right? I mean, just because the word is not in the Bible doesn't mean it's not a word used to describe something that is in the Bible. Yet these people will use this argument, but at the same time, they will say things like that, right? Because I'm sure Donna B would say, oh, yeah, the word Bible's not in there. The word Trinity is not in there. The word Rapture's not in there, but it's still in the Bible. But then he'll turn around and say, but Tribulation Saints is not something that's in the Bible. And it's like, but it's used as something to describe something that's in there. I see this happen all the time where people will use this argument and then refute it when it fits their belief. When it doesn't fit their belief, they'll use it. It's just mixing, matching with it. They're very inconsistent. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. But, uh, yeah, that is about that. You know what? I might take this as the screenshot for this video. So, thanks for watching and take care.